There are few issues which divide Americans more than guns. Listen, you can get irritated all you want. I lost my damn son. Your anger is not going to outmatch mine, man. Communities across this nation have been torn apart by mass shootings and the bitter divides often left in their wake. We're left here to suffer, to pick up the pieces, but to fight. Because right now we have to fight for our children. If we don't fight for our children, there is no hope. It is a political issue. Children are dying in my community. This is Rob Elementary School. On the 24th of May this year, 19 children and two teachers were shot dead here. 17 others were injured. It was the worst school shooting in the US since Sandy Hook and the third worst in the country's history. The tragedy here shocked this quiet rural community and six months on, the scars are still raw. I'm Molly Blackall, Global Affairs Correspondent at I, here in Uvalde, Southern Texas. The US is heading to the polls in an election which will determine the makeup of American government at local, state and national levels. I've travelled to this community to see how the tragedy of May 24th is altering its political landscape. You don't have to travel far to see how the right to bear arms plays out in this part of the world. I'm here in Walmart, a big supermarket chain in the US, and um, if you come round, you can see that they sell guns here in the supermarket. So there, there's one which is $200, goes right up to $800, but they are here just along with the insect sprays and the frying pans. I'm meeting True Hyatt, a born and raised Texan, who explained to me what it's like to grow up with guns as a part of life. You know, it's an awful thing to be remembered for as a city, just like Sandy Hook and, you know, all the, all the rest of any other school shootings or the Oklahoma bombing or whatever, but it is what it is. That's what we're known for now, so. It's a small enough community that everybody in some way was affected. You either know somebody, you're related to somebody, you employ somebody or you work with somebody that was absolutely directly affected. Well, I haven't felt any change in my position. I, I've always thought that there was no need for anyone to own a semi or automatic weapon. Um, those, are kill, those are used to kill people, plain and simple. Rifles, handguns, sure, you know, you can go hunting with them. This is big hunting country. You know, I grew up with guns over the door of my home in the back of our truck, you know. We all grew up with them. We knew how to use them. Um, semi and automatic weapons, no, I never think that they should be used. But it's not just questions around how the shooter acquired his weapon that's dividing people here. The botched police response is also a major political issue. Kelly Earnhardt lives just nine houses down from Rob Elementary School and witnessed firsthand the horror that took place that day. Kelly, who works in another school district, told me of the anger still felt towards the police department here. I think the, the first thing that really triggered the, the distrust and then created this ball of emotion is when they released a video of what was happening in the hallway. Seeing everyone stand around, there's a, a scene where an officer was hand sanitizer in hand, but yet you had parents who were being held back because they were willing to storm out. Not to say that they would have, you know, be alive today. They may have been shot. But really and truly, are they really alive? I mean, if they, they lost their children. They lost their child. They were massacred. How, how could they be alive, you know? The Democrats here in Uvalde have made gun control and support for the bereaved families central to their midterms campaign. They are hoping to make inroads in this most Republican of states. The Democratic candidate for Texas governor, Beto O'Rourke, has been a regular fixture here since the attack. So what are the Democrats pitching to voters? 23 weeks and not a single thing has changed in this state to make it any less likely that that happens to any other child in any other classroom, any other teacher like Eva and Irma in any other school in the state of Texas. We need to win this election. We need to make sure that we have leaders in positions of public trust to actually care, as Carlos said, about children and families so that we do the right thing at this incredibly important moment of truth. My name is Ronald Garza. I am a county commissioner for Uvalde County, Precinct 4. And 
what kind of roles does a county commissioner have? We don't have those in the UK. Okay, so county commissioner, uh, we oversee the sheriff's department. At the beginning, uh, I think some people did not want politics to get or to play a part on this, but eyes have been opened. The parents, the families, the community are now saying, well, it does have a lot to do with politics, especially the way the laws are written. I think civic engagement is at an all-time high here in Uvalde, and I think the, the gun issue is, is driving that here. Uh, statewide, uh, the gun issue, the abortion issue, uh, is also uh, caught a lot of interest, a lot of voters' interest. So we're thinking that there'll be a record turnout, being that it's not it's a non-presidential election, you know, the, the presidents are not on the ballot this year, and that's when voter turnout is somewhat low, but, but I think this year is going to be different. Well, we've already seen a shift, uh, at least we've seen Texas, you know, 74% of Republican women actually want to see an age increase on access to this type of militarized weaponry. Uh, you know, when we had an assault weapons ban in the United States, these things didn't happen. And it's unfortunate that we're in this space right now. I understand my country and especially this state's uh, allure with these types of weapons. But we have to have some common sense solutions because what's happening now in the United States is simply unacceptable and it's quite frankly barbaric. We've allowed young men to have access to militarized weaponry at will. And we are starting to see, not just in Texas but across the state, the ramifications of those actions. Uh, politicians need to really wrap their mind around this, that it doesn't happen in the UK as you suggested. It just simply doesn't. Do you have mental illness in the UK? Of course you do. But you don't have access to this type of weapon. Mr O'Rourke is still polling behind the incumbent Republican governor, Greg Abbott. And the chances of Texas ever turning blue still seem slim. The Republicans I've spoken to here in Uvalde feel that Democrats are politicizing the attack, even using the families. I think it's unfortunate and I don't I don't think the families realize how much they're being used and maybe they don't look at it that way because you know they do want control and they want they want those measures in place. The problem is that once you start, you know, taking them away or, or controlling them, you know, where else is it going to go? Um, you know, Beto was talking about going and, and taking your ARs away. Are they going to come into your house and take them? You know, what, what extreme measures are they going to take? Um, so that's, you know, I know that it's a conversation that must be had that maybe they're might be some kind of limitations, but the fear is always that once you start doing that, where is it going to go? I joined families at a Day of the Dead ceremony in the cemetery where most of the victims of the Rob Elementary shooting are buried. There, I spoke to Velma Lisa Duran, whose sister Irma Garcia, a teacher, was killed in the attack. A few days later, Irma's husband Joe had a catastrophic heart attack and passed away. Velma told me why this celebration, in which the community honours its death, means so much this year. My name is Velma Lisa Duran. I am Irma Linda Garcia's older sister and Joe's sister-in-law. So to see all our families here memorialising our loved ones, um, it is difficult right now. Dia de los Muertos is supposed to be celebrating their memory, their life. But the lives were taken. The lives were taken in a very brutal way. And people stood around. And so it's very difficult, extremely difficult, just to wake up in the morning knowing what has happened and bits and pieces are coming out. And the truth will come out. I, I understand that. But the fact that it's taken so long, I think, is what's crushing you, Valdi. Today I welcome this day with open, an open mind and open heart, knowing that even when you're in peace, you're in heaven. I know they are. And they're with my mom and my grandparents and my cousins and uncles and aunts and we left here to suffer, to pick up the pieces, but to fight. Because right now we have to fight for our children. If we don't fight for our children, there is no hope. And that God will embrace us, and He has, because we wouldn't be able to be here. There's no way without God. The pain still felt here is palpable, and will be for a long time. But while those 21 people can't be brought back, 
Families and campaigners hope that this could be a watershed moment to prevent further tragedies like this in Texas and in the US as a whole.